I am going to uh, talk a little bit from RFID Journal's perspective about RFID. It's a little poignant when Tommy tells me we would have been at RFID Journal Live today. I had actually lost track of the dates and realized that today is that day. So boy, do I wish I was at that conference right now and um, hopefully seeing some of you there. Maybe we'll see what September looks like. So we'll uh, stay tuned for the next, uh, the next thing that pandem pandemic throws at us. So in the meantime, I'm going to give you just the very basics of RFID. I know a lot of you already know plenty about it. I'm going to presume that you're all starting the same place I started when I first got into uh, writing about the industry. And you'll just have to bear with me a little bit through some of that. So um, the outside world still just really doesn't know what RFID is, I find. And I can vouch for that because when I go to a party or a family reunion and people say, tell me what you write about. I, I don't usually have a very quick answer I have to explain. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a longer version of what I tell them. <laughs> and this one will be with pictures, so that might make it a little bit more interesting. Um, so 2007 or so, when I first started writing about uh, RFID, at that time, it was really all about the warehouse. Let me just pull my screen up here for you. Okay, so what I've done is I went ahead and just uh, knowing I was going to be talking about RFID today, I, I just pulled up pictures from stories that I wrote. These are all pictures from my stories. And um, this is, these are the early days. So 2007, 2008, RFID was all about the warehouse. And a lot of my stories were in the warehouse or uh, retailers were in that, that early stage of trying to understand where are their goods. Uh, Walmart issued a mandate indicating their suppliers all had to put an RFID tag on palletized goods or uh, large cartons of goods so that they could see when, um, you know, a box full of video games or, or, you know, blue jeans or blenders, when that was arriving, when it was going through their distribution centers, when it was arriving in the store. Um, that, uh, that push was also taking place in Europe, uh, Metro, certainly, uh, Lord, let's see, who else? Marks and Spencer was involved in that. Um, so I, here's, here's what I will show you, very, very basically. I'll keep it quick. Up in the right-hand corner, you see a typical RFID tag. That's a UHF passive RFID tag. Um, it's got an IC or integrated circuit in the center of it. It's surrounded by a copper or aluminum antenna. And that, the, there's a unique ID number encoded on the chip itself. The antenna is sending that data. It has to be received by a reader. Um, and down on the lower left is your typical fixed reader at that time, which would be um, typically installed in, in warehouses at dock doors so that they can understand when that tag passed through. Um, this was, again, a passive system as opposed to active RFID in which the tag is transmitting on its own. Um, this passive tag requires the energy from that reader to respond. Um, up in the center, you'll see uh, your typical warehouseman um, moving these palletized goods through the dock door, it looks like he's loading the back of a tractor trailer there, the trailer itself. And typically there's going to be, I don't know if you see my little pointer, there is an RFID tag that would be stuck on the top or on the side, maybe one on each side, so that readers could uh, capture that tag. And that was about it. At that time, you might've even called that a bit of a glorified barcode because it could capture that tag ID quick. You didn't have to stop and get out a scanner. Um, but that was pretty much what they were doing, identifying where things are and when. Um, the Walmart mandate actually ended up, there was a pause on that because it was just simply the, the ROI wasn't there for the suppliers. At the time, it was expensive to do. Not everybody was doing it. And uh, things got put on hold. So well, it was kind of a regrouping for the RFID industry. And there was a lot of very fancy engineering work going on and a lot of diversification. And that has led to, for me as a journalist, a lot of really interesting stories. So these are just a few examples of the directions that some of the RFID um, hardware was going. Um, up on the left, you'll see uh, uh, some wine bottles. This was a new design of RFID tags with a longer antenna. Uh, I believe this is tamper evident so that if you open the bottle of wine, you're gonna break the antenna and that will affect the response from the tag if you interrogate it so you'll know if somebody actually opened that bottle. Um, what's pretty fancy also about this is that you have 
an RFID tag actually on liquid, which is not easy to do, and they've engineered ways to make that much easier, and that's uh, been pretty impressive. Um, down here in the lower area, you see uh, oil and gas, and you've got uh, a metal pipe. You've got on metal tags now. They have either a foam spacer, so you can just attach it to the metal and not be uh, having the metal interfering with the transmission. Or in some cases, they now have tags that will use the metal to ex extend the range of the transmission. Um, then there's readers. Readers have gotten uh, fancier and more impressive as time goes on, and that's made it easier for people to deploy. This, in the center here, you've got a typical, um, this would be a retail establishment where a sales clerk or somebody in the store is using a very small reader that's got a Bluetooth connection to their phone. They've got an app on the phone, and in this way they can then access all the data without carrying a bulky reader around with them or going to a computer to look up the data. Um, down in the lower right, if you can see that, um, that's a, um, the direction we're going in malls where the stores have wider and wider openings. The entrance is very wide. They have, you'll see two small antennas along, on the ceiling there and they can identify the direction that things are going through and read a pretty long distance, as well as they can now modify to make sure that they're not catching the spill reads from tags that are already in the store. So you'll see there's some goods already in the store there. They don't wanna be reading those tags, they wanna be reading the ones passing through the door. And uh, they've gotten very good at um, narrowing that down, getting a really granular read there. Um, up on the right corner, if you can see that, there's uh, somebody in an airplane. They're, airplanes in the aerospace industry is interesting because in some cases they want to put a lot of data on one tag so they can uh, have a high memory chip on there and each time that something's inspected or maintained or serviced they can input that data straight onto the tag and it's stored there as well as in hopefully not server usually too. But that way uh, it gives people a little more autonomy when they're actually accessing the data. Say if they've moved it from one warehouse to another or one manufacturing site to um, an airport for that matter. Um, and then it takes us to kind of where we're going now. Now with the internet of things and, and some of the things happening with software and now we've got blockchain and digital twins that people are creating. Um, the sky's the limit, IoT, I, IoT has, has been served well by RFID so far. Um, the data can, can do some very interesting things for a really wide variety of industries. So just to show you how wide this, uh, this variety is, I, I just uh, selected from some interesting stories. The one up here on the right is um, penguins at the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, they were coming down with a condition, I, I'm, I hope I'm getting this right, I think it was called bumblefoot. And they, the condition was caused by standing around in wet cement too long and not getting enough exercise. And you know, you can't put a little Fitbit on a penguin. So they've got this little tag and they're tracking the exercise of the penguin actually underwater. So the reader's underwater as the, tag, as the uh, penguin swims around in the pool, they can identify which penguins are getting the exercise that they need and, and respond accordingly. Um, all the way to the left is beer. We've got uh, beer kegs. Uh, the beer industry is using RFID in all kinds of ways, um, but the beer kegs I thought were interesting. Um, because they're reusable, the, the uh, beer manufacturer will fill up those kegs, send them to a retailer. The retailer then sends the kegs back. Um, RFID helps them keep track of that process through all the, the uh, different participants of the supply chain and identifies where they go missing. And in case you thought that might not be an issue, um, the person I talked to for one of the stories was with one of the big beer companies. And he said he was looking for his kegs and he was on eBay and um, saw that somebody had filled them with sand and turned them into barbells for weightlifters. And those were his kegs. So <laughs> he was pretty aggravated by that. So these are the kind of things that, you know, RFID is bringing visibility into something that traditionally had none whatsoever. Um, down in the center, you've got uh, a woman in a fitting room. So here, again, you've got RFID, but probably a reader behind that screen that she's looking at, which is also a mirror. Uh, you've got a tag in the clothing, and then it's, uh, she selects prompts because it's identified what sweater she's brought into the fitting room, 
And it can then uh, give her options, to accessories that she might want to try with that sweater. It can suggest other colors or sizes. She can make requests to a sales rep to bring her another size. Um, all kinds of interesting things happening in the stores themselves with RFID. Uh, she can also use that uh, ultimately at the point of sale, make a purchase and walk out the door and it will identify whether or not it's been purchased before it leaves. Um, and then lastly, I have up here on the top, uh, this is an interesting, in agriculture, there's just so much happening there right now. Uh, we've got somebody, it's probably strawberries, uh, an RFID tag. You'll probably hear more about this kind of thing shortly, but you can do uh, sensing with the tag itself. So it's understanding temperatures. Um, you can then identify, you know, were the strawberries really at the optimal temperature throughout the entire supply chain or not? Now you may have a vis vision into that and it's not as expensive as you might think. So that's really become a very interesting use case and I expect to see that grow a lot. Um, and that actually brings me to, to the pandemic and to COVID-19. Obviously my work changed very suddenly when, um, when the pandemic hit. And so now I'm looking at what RFID can do now and in the future. And what is happening so far that I'm hearing from the industry is a lot of movement around the food supply chain. That is gonna be very interesting moving ahead now. Today we've, we've changed the model. Um, people are buying their food online and having it delivered to their homes in the way they used to do with apparel and other goods. And it's quite likely that that, that pattern is gonna continue after the, uh, the quarantines are over. But in addition to that, um, understanding where it came from and, and you know, where, where, where were my strawberries grown? When were they picked? And you know, how, how long has it been since then? And, and what's, what conditions have they experienced? That's gonna matter more and more to people. So that's a major issue for, um, for everybody involved in that logistics, the manufacturers, the retailers right now. Um, the other side that I'm hearing a lot about is uh, healthcare. Obviously, the, there's a lot of stress on the uh, hospitals right now, but that will, um, uh, that will ease. But in the meantime, they're hoping to have better technology to help them manage this kind of thing. So that's going to mean um, more RFID for tracking linens, for tracking medications, for tracking patients. Um, there's a lot of really interesting things happening in healthcare right now, hand hygiene. Um, in addition to that, there's other things that are happening, like the corrections industries are looking at using RFID to track inmates who are released early to uh, prevent it, it continued infections in the, in the actual facilities. Um, I think we're going to see some very interesting development in RFID over the next year, and uh, we're in a good position to actually watch that happen. So thank you very much. I'm going to turn it over.